Hello, my name is Allison Albelda, and I am a recent graduate of Northwestern University. And this is a presentation on my thesis entitled Politics Versus Policies, Responses to the COVID-19 Pandemic in Ghana. I studied abroad in Ghana in 2020 and came home early due to the coronavirus pandemic, which was the inspiration for this thesis. To begin, I would like to cover the risk factors for COVID as a whole in Sub-Saharan Africa, given that the numbers are relatively low compared to the rest of the world, and it needs to be looked at in a different lens. I recommend also seeing Nanjela Niabala's How to Talk About COVID-19 in Africa for more. So for starters, in Ghana, the median age is 20.7 years, and only 3% of the population is over the age of 65. As we know, those who are older, specifically over 65, and have pre-existing conditions, such as non-communicable diseases, diseases, they're at a far greater risk of catching the disease. A lot of the time is spent outdoors, and CDs are relatively low. On the other hand, things that can make coronavirus more prevalent or, or as a higher risk factor could be lack of social distancing, um, issues with sanitation, and also lacking infrastructure as we know. However, the concern in Ghana is not so much about the health impact, but that of the economy. In a study done on the lockdown imposed in Accra and Kumasi, shot at all, found that the majority of Ghanaians' greatest fear of lockdown was employment, and over 80% reported some loss of income during the lockdown. As a whole, there was an estimated $1.6 billion economic impact as of May 2020, and it has only gotten worse from there. This has to do with how many people work in the informal sector or how things were so heavily impacted when Accra and Kumasi were shut down during the lockdown. So the government deployed support mechanisms to assist along with the coronavirus alleviation plan, but these were done in the black drop of clientelism, which reflects the status of democratic consolidation in the country. And there is reason to examine these relief efforts for they reflect an all too common occurrence of public goods being given under political pretenses, a phenomenon all the more prevalent during election years and exemplified in the COVID-19 responses in Ghana as seen with the water given, PPE, hot meals and electricity. Those are all explained in more detail in my paper. However, I will be going over the hot meals in particular. Before we go over that, we must understand what democratic consolidation is as a whole. So democratic consolidation is a theory developed by Larry Diamond in which consolidation occurs when countries become more liberal, accountable, and responsive. Things can help that can create curtailment of democratic consolidation, or rather democratic backsliding, have to do with extensive executive power, which leads to struggles of accountability, and clientelism with excessive patronage, which creates cycles of dependency on goods and services where people depend on certain leaders for these goods and services and continue to elect them. I recommend reading anything by Jima Bawadi. Um, there are also some resources at the end of Nathan and Brearley and Graham in particular. And so as a whole, COVID exists as a stress test for Ghana's status in terms of democratic consolidation. So let's take a look at the three core tenets of democratic consolidation and see how they occurred during the coronavirus pandemic and the responses in Ghana. The first is that of liberalism. So curtailments on one's movement and those restrictions as a whole is a direct limit on one's freedom. And also the passing of the Imposition of Restrictions Act, which removed parliament's ability to check executive powers in emergency situations is also another an example of emergency legislation being used to go and become inherently less liberal. On the other hand of accountability too, this emergency legislation ensures that there is no accountability for the executive power because they are able to bypass any parliamentary checking. Also, there was extensive ex executive power throughout any of the coronavirus responses in which the executive authorities were able to go and determine how all of the PPE was distributed. The last tenet would be responsiveness. So as a whole, COVID relief was pretty responsive. Um, we will find out later that 89% of those interviewed in the Shadi et al. article received some form of pandemic relief. However, as is unfortunately the norm in Ghana, distribution is almost always based on personal networks that are so heavily embedded that they continue to exist given their backdrop in Ghana, despite the current relief efforts that were given during COVID. One example of that can be seen in food contracts. An example of that can be seen in food contracts in which 470,000 meals were distributed. There was also a huge lack of social distancing when it came to go and distribute this food and it was used as a mechanism to report 
reward party members as done during the school year by the NPP in order to go and provide party broker support. That is further explained in writings by Nathan and Brearley, which I will have attached at the end of the paper. As a whole too, given the 2020 election, food contracts provided a key opportunity to go and reward party brokers and help further the agenda of the ruling party. We also can see this in the term in the mechanisms of elections. So elections and COVID-19 as a whole, the campaign mechanisms were partially based on PPE distribution as seen in this photo of candidate Mahama as he was giving out PPE. But on the other hand, also provided much skepticism given that people did not trust leaders as they preached that one should be going in social distancing yet they were holding rallies, which is directly contradictory. In a pre-election survey done by the CDD in Ghana, there was a 15% higher confidence in the NPP and their ability to deliver on campaign promises than the NDC. They also received high marks for COVID, electricity, and education. It is no surprise that this occurred, particularly given that relief efforts were given during an election year and the NPP had basically carte blanche in their abilities to go and give relief during COVID. So what can we learn from here as a whole? Well, we see some opportunities of democratic consolidation growing and also some instances in which we see democratic backsliding. Let's start with the growth. As a whole, it was a relatively programmatic response given to COVID. There was widespread relief with services as reported by the 89% access by shot at all. And there was relatively open communication regarding data. Ghana did an excellent job in their relief efforts in getting them out to the public. However, as is the case, with most instances in Ghana, there was a lack of accountability with legislation and accountability as a whole of leaders. The clientelistic distribution of services is nothing out of the ordinary when it came to occur with COVID for it followed the typical model. Also the misuse and misdirections of funds and corruption followed the, the backdrop that occurred prior to COVID as COVID was not any different. So COVID as itself provided a stress test and another instance in which we can observe democratic consolidation and democratic backsliding in Ghana as a whole. Well, I would like to give a huge shout out and thanks to some people in particular who helped to make this happen, uh, particularly Professor Reno, Professor Joseph, Professor Galvin, the staff at the CDD Ghana, the people who I interviewed who were so amazing. So Professor Riedel, Professor Dion, Professor Diamond, Emmanuel Graham, Professor Guillampo, Professor Paller, Muhammad Awal, Dr. Kojo Asante, Kwame Asidu Asante, Professor Nathan, Judd Devermont, and Marielle Harris. Also, please feel free to look at the links below as well that will give um, other instances of, please feel free to look at the links below which give citations and other articles and references worth looking at too. Thank you so much.